Right, this video is on power supplies. So all that the exam board want you to know for this part of your specification is um, know about common types of DC power supply. Now, DC means direct current. Generally, you're talking about batteries or solar power or anything that I call kind of safe power. So DC basically writes off mains electricity. All I'm going to show you is some very common standard power supplies and this is what we did in the lesson but hopefully you can recognize them if you can tell me they're good and bad points and the kind of product that they'd be best suited for then you're well sorted for the exam. So this doesn't need to be mega detailed but here we go. So first up these would be what we call zinc chloride batteries. These are your, I mean even the name here sounds cheap doesn't it, Con O Power. Uh, these are your super cheap, buy them in the pound shop, uh, budget batteries, the kind that cost you like a quid for four. They are benefits, dirt cheap. Um, they are common as well, really easy to get hold of. You get them in large range of sizes, so you get AAA, AA, C cell, D cell, whatever. Um, problem with them is they don't last very long and they're only really good for low power devices, so you might use them in like a remote control for a television, um, the sort of thing that you never ever have to change the batteries on. So if you think when was the last time you changed the batteries in your TV remote, chances are you've got zinc chloride batteries in them. Uh, if we're getting our tree hugging hippie hats on, they're really bad for the environment uh, because they've got nasty chemicals in them. When you throw them on landfill, those chemicals leak out, they get into the water s uh, system, they kill all the little fishies and fluffy bunnies. So not good for the environment and they are disposable as well so they're not very sustainable in that respect once they're used up they're no good moving on your next type you've hopefully seen this before this is a solar cell and you hopefully should know that what it does is convert solar energy as in UV light into an uh, electrical voltage or current uh, great for the environment the greenies will love you they're really good and friendly um, they never wear out well not easily they do get dirty and less efficient over time but they don't really wear out like a battery does but the biggest problem is they are rubbish for making energy this is why you don't see solar powered cars on the roads at the moment this is why um, you can't get away from the electricity companies and power your house off those roof mounted solar cells they just don't make enough electricity so although they're good for the environment they are not good for producing energy really and even worse in this country where we get no sun at all so yeah only really suited to things that are very very low power so if you think about it you've all seen those garden solar lights you get maybe get those things spend all day in the sun during the summer and an entire day charging up a little battery will only give you enough energy to light a single LED for sort of half of the night time so that's how bad they are at generating electricity so I don't want to put a downer on them because we should all be using more sustainable energy but they're just not very good so until someone sorts out the technology that's something we can't use next up you might be thinking well they are very similar to these here well um, these are the same size of batteries but a different technology these are what are known as alkaline batteries and the reason I picked Duracell is Duracell are a well trusted brand they're quality batteries they tend to last longer than the cheaper ones that's because they're based on alkaline technology um, now they again pros they're really common all the different sizes you can get hold of but they have a much larger capacity than zinc chloride so they'll last a lot longer the downside is you're paying for that technology so they cost more money um, and again they're bad for the environment they will run out eventually and you've still got to chuck them away so if you're buying a high power toy for a Christmas present something like a remote control car um, these might be a better choice because they'll last a lot longer than buying these things where you'll get about 10 minutes use with these you'll get maybe half an hour to an hour's use but so better capacity but s more expensive and still bad for the fluffy bunnies. Next one, you've seen these before, you'll often find them in watches, um, you'll find them in anything that has to be small, so 
little you'll actually get them in those little musical birthday cards you can get uh, calculators anything where space is at a premium so these are what are known as lithium coin cell or button batteries and your benefits they're small so you get a lot of voltage and a lot of energy crammed into a tiny space but the downside is you're paying for that so they cost money if you buy a decent one of these you'll normally pay four or five quid um, they don't last that long obviously because they are quite tiny and again they are bad for the environment you have to throw them away they're not rechargeable um, please don't confuse lithium here with lithium ion which is a rechargeable type of battery that you'd get in modern mobile phones and laptops this type of lithium battery is totally disposable you can't reuse it but they are small so they pack a lot of punch for a small size anything that needs to be compact um, you'll find them in key fobs as well okay next one lead acid uh, you get these in a car uh, they are the first of our rechargeable type of batteries as in you can empty them put electricity into them and they will fill back up and store that electricity um, pros and cons brilliant they're rechargeable which makes them a lot better for the environment you can use them over and over although they will wear out eventually they are cheap in terms of how much energy you can store in them so they're good they're kind of very cost effective which is why they're good for cars and good tolerant to weather as well so they will be able to start a car in very cold or very hot weather and they can provide a lot of energy quickly which is useful for a car as well to be honest this is probably more info than you need to remember for the exam but it's just good to have a, get a bit of background knowledge it will help you maybe with coursework uh, cons they're heavy they got lead in them lead is heavy heavy lead um, and lead is also a nasty chemical as well a nasty uh, thing you don't want hanging around so when they do get disposed of it has to be done carefully and although they do recharge they take a lot longer to recharge than other types of battery that are rechargeable so there's your pros and cons all right this is a more modern rechargeable type of battery this is what we know as NiCad or nickel cadmium um, you'll often find these in we've got these are the batteries you'll get in dr in drills certainly older generation drills uh, those kind of rechargeable batteries that still fit in most everyday products you'll get are made of nickel cadmium or actually nickel metal hydride uh, if you've got a half decent remote control car or remote control plane or one of those helicopter things it might have a battery pack that comes with it that will be a NICAD battery pack they are rechargeable um, better than lead acid in terms of they charge up quicker and the downside is they are more expensive sort of in terms of how much energy you get versus how much they cost uh, but again available in lots of common sizes uh, there we go right this is another one you might want to consider uh, you might be looking at that thinking oh that's a plug that must be mains electricity I thought we weren't doing that well this is what's called an AC adapter as in it takes alternating current from the mains and it turns it into DC direct current so you can actually tell by looking what's what printed on these things so input 120 volts AC output you get 12 volts so what they do is they take mains electricity and they turn it into a nice safe voltage and they turn it into direct current so you can re use these to permanently replace a battery um, the problem with them is they ain't portable because you've got to be plugged into something so uh, no good for powering something that you need to take out into the wilderness with you because you can't take a plug socket with you but they are great if you've got something that's going to use a lot of energy and would waste batteries so if you think laptops use them uh, computers use a version of this for powering them anything that's going to be kind of semi stationary and stay in one place is much more cost effective to power off an AC adapter than it is to power from batteries um, your mobile phones use these as chargers uh, house phone might use it for charging up the house phone um, and what's more important is they're quite safe a lot of people think oh here's an electrical wire here if I cut this wire I'm gonna kill myself well it might be plugged into the wall but actually the voltage coming out of this skinny little wire here is low voltage it's perfectly safe and you're not gonna really hurt yourself if you were to accidentally get electrocuted by it so there you go AC adapters right just as your final revision this would be a good idea to maybe I'll give you a few seconds when I show you the picture but pause the video see if you can remember what power supply would suit it best 
and that would kind of work as a revision for this topic. So, right, okay, hopefully you've unpaused it. I would choose a solar cell and a nickel cadmium rechargeable battery. Remember, this product would need solar power to charge it, but then it needs a battery to store that charge during the day so it can use it at night time to light its LED. So that was a garden solar light. Okay, this one I would say needs to be small and compact, so you're looking at lithium coin cell. This one is a very energy intensive product because it's got motors, they use a lot of energy, so the best choice would be a NICAD rechargeable battery pack, so you could use it over and over again. If you think it might be a kind of flash in the pan, get used at Christmas but never again job, then maybe a set of alkalines or Duracell batteries would be good for that. Same again in the handset. Okay, this one should be obvious. It's small, it's a key fob, so it needs a small battery. So, lithium coin cell. Um, my wife's on the phone. Okay, this would be two things. You would have a NICAD rechargeable battery in the handset because you take that around with you and it needs to be portable, but the docking station or charger would have an AC adapter. So you've actually got two power supplies there again. You wouldn't really use disposable batteries here because of how often a phone gets used. Okay, the remote control, best bet would be a, probably to save money, a set of zinc chloride batteries. If you think about it, you're never really ever gonna need to replace the batteries in this for the life of the product. The batteries will probably last longer than the television does before it gets replaced. So you might as well save some money and use zinc chloride. You could use alkaline, you could use NICAD rechargeables, whatever, but you'd be wasting your money because you'd never ever use them up. Okay, this one's a little bit different, depends whether it's a new camera or an old camera. Older cameras used to use disposable batteries, in which case you'd go alkaline, but pretty much all modern cameras use a rechargeable battery pack because cameras like to eat through batteries, so I would have said NICAD rechargeable for that. A car you would want a lead acid battery for that because you need a lot of capacity for a cheap price. Torch um, depends how much you value your safety. If you're a cheapskate you might stick zinc chloride in it um, and then hope that you never have to use it in anger. If you think that your power cut might last a half decent amount of time then you might want to put alkaline batteries in it so it lasts a bit longer. Either way, not really worth putting rechargeable batteries in unless you're the kind of person that's using your torch every day of the week, like a security guard, then a rechargeable battery pack might make sense. Um, hopefully what you're beginning to learn here is that there is no 100% guaranteed answer. You just need to choose the battery that has the properties that match the, um, the product or situation you're using it in. Okay. This one is supposed to be one of those musical greetings cards, so it's a card, it needs to be thin and small, so I'd go uh, lithium coin cell. And then the bane of every teacher, the one device responsible for no homework or revision ever getting done. If you've made it this far, well done, it means you're not playing on your Xbox. Uh, the Xbox, you would use an AC adapter to power the main unit, because this thing generally stays put and it would cost you a hell of a lot of money if you run it on batteries and then the little um, control pad god I've forgotten what it's called, it's been such a long time since I've been able to play my Xbox mainly because I'm sat here doing revision lessons for you um, anyway for the control pad you would use if you're one of using a lot or doing a lot of gaming you'd use a NICAD rechargeable battery pack you can buy the little ones you click in um, alkaline batteries are good if you play occasionally and if you play for about five minutes a day then maybe zinc chloride but generally NICAD rechargeables or alkalines so you'd have two there right um, okay voltage regulators I'll do very quickly just because I'm here and I might as well just to remind you guys um, voltage regulators are these little pre-made devices that allow you to put in a voltage of sort of a range of volts and get out a predefined voltage so um, this is going to be very boring you might have a 
chip or a component that can only handle say 5 volts before it blows up um, like a PIC chip. Most PIC chips they will only take up to a maximum of about 5 volts but you might need to use a 9 volt battery to power it or you might want to put it into say a car and a car has a 12 volt system but you want to use this chip in a system that's got a higher voltage than you can handle this is where you'd use one of these things, a voltage regulator they have three legs, they're pretty self-explanatory in is where you put the power that's coming in so you'd put your 12 volts from the car in here out it gives you your nice regulated or adjusted voltage out so you'd get your 5 volts out the other end reference just goes to negative or 0 volts um, any of you that are planning on using motors that need a lot of voltage in coursework and things you would use a voltage regulator for so in a nutshell all they do is they take a higher voltage and adjust it down to a regulated lower voltage that's all there is to know about it really um, just recognize the symbol, realize that in means the voltage goes in, out the voltage comes out and reference goes to zero. That's all there is to it. Um, that's everything there is on power supplies to know for the course and for the exam. Really it's all about being able to name a suitable power supply that might be used in a particular product and you'll be happy. There we go.